Jesus in the Super Bowl? If you're planning to watch the upcoming Super Bowl, you'll likely see a few ads about Jesus. When something big is happening, a movement, a moment, a mission that could change the world, you want to be ready. You want to learn everything you can. And right now, something big is happening. He Gets Us is a multi-year national campaign to raise the respect and relevance of Jesus in our culture. It's starting conversations. It's grabbing attention and changing minds. It's all over Twitter, in Times Square, on billboards and in stadiums. And on February 12th, you'll see it on the biggest stage in America. You'll see Jesus in the Super Bowl. The conversation is starting. Are you ready for it? Those who oppose the campaign allege that this is nothing more than a PR campaign to galvanize Christians to support right-wing politics. I believe the He Gets Us campaign is a uh, PR effort and, and website uh, strategically developed by right-wing evangelicals to uh, rope people in with inclusive-sounding messaging and get them plugged into local churches that will uh, eventually teach them that to be a Christian means to support right-wing politics. NPR wrote, it meaning this whole campaign. Mm -hmm. It means a lot more people will probably be sending out confused tweets about a quote, Jesus commercial, a search term on Twitter that was already flooded and aired during the Grammy Awards they were, they were um, referencing. So here is NPR, National Public Radio, upon which many depend for being quote, neutral and objective, that is anything but no. in something that is fundamental to so many of our no. lives. But just saying the word Jesus, is riling up some people on social media. One person tweeting, glad I'm an atheist. Others calling the ads cringe personified and are using religious freedom as an excuse to hate and discriminate. This atheist claims that placing an ad is a waste of money that could have been used to feed the hungry, which reminds us of Judas Iscariot's statements in John 12 when a woman anointed Jesus' feet with expensive oil. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, Why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? John 12, verses 4 and 5. What's the big deal here? Why would anybody care if there are uh, commercials about Jesus on during the Super Bowl? You know, I'm an atheist activist. I was an evangelical for decades, and I didn't blink when I heard about the ads themselves. You know, it's a private ad campaign. They have the right to run wherever they want. But I have become interested in the money players, you know, the millions and millions of dollars and, you know, the Hobby Lobby people behind it. And that becomes problematic when we see this sort of marketing effort and this selling of a soft focus, kind of a theology free, touchy feely Jesus figure to the masses in a country that is increasingly secular. You know, I think it's what, a little less than a third of Americans now don't identify at all as religious. They're not atheists, but Religion doesn't play a meaningful part in their lives. And I think this is part of an effort to sort of try to counter that people are starting to panic. And maybe I think they might be trying to uh, massage the culture to perhaps reinforce ideas that relate to Christian nationalism. And that's a much more sinister idea. Uh, beyond the power players, even I have to remark about the waste. You know, I think about it. You know, instead, if Jesus, the best version of Christ exists, and he saw this campaign running. I have a feeling he would go to Steve Green and Hobby Lobby and all the money people and he'd say, why aren't you feeding poor people? Why aren't you building shelters? Why aren't we aiding the people in Turkey and Syria? Why aren't we alleviating suffering in a tangible way instead of telling people ideas about Jesus that they kind of already know about? Well, I think if you're Christ the Green himself family, would though, and it. they are doing a lot of the things, the philanthropic things you describe, can't you just do them all, especially if you have plenty of money like they seem to? Well, we can redirect to uh, where they donate, but I'm still talking about the $20 million for, what is it, 60 or 120 seconds on Sunday? $20 million. I don't think we can ignore that. There must be better way to use the money than to show black and white photos with you know, lovely music and a beautiful sort of, but sort of calorie-free message about a cultural Christ. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not convinced that Christ himself would have endorsed this campaign. 
However, we will say that this atheist is correct in that the kind of Jesus this group promotes is a touchy-feely and social and cultural revolutionary type of Jesus, which we will address shortly. But many applaud the ad campaign, especially considering how pretty much every Hollywood show, award, and celebrity ridicules Jesus. I think this is symbolic of probably, arguably, the greatest cultural erosion in the history of our country. I I feel like when you look at the numbers, uh, we just dropped below 50% for the first time in terms of Americans' membership in houses of worship. Uh, Culture is eroding in this country. Culture is beliefs influencing beliefs, and beliefs come from values. Values come from character, and character comes from leadership. I've got seven and 10-year-old boys. I choose to lead them to help shape their character and know that there is a God who loves them, that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, faithfulness, these are good things. And guess what? Those are things that Jesus did put out. And I think those are virtues and values that we need to build in this country, not tear down, and certainly have the freedom of expression to put them out in the wide open as we should. Amen. Amen. We couldn't agree more. However, we are skeptical about the ad campaign's creators and what they truly believe about Jesus Christ. Tell us about the He Gets Us campaign. Well, the He Gets Us campaign uh, really is, it does two things. One, it's kind of a rebranding of Jesus Christ in America. That's a red flag right there. You don't rebrand Jesus Christ to make him appealing or acceptable in America. The apostles didn't rebrand Jesus Christ, neither did the reformers. They preached about the crucified Christ. To get the truth about Christ is critical, because if anybody preaches another Christ, he's cursed, he's damned, and short-circuits the possibility of the truth, and the truth alone can save. So being right about Jesus Christ is critical. Uh, This kind of skepticism toward Jesus isn't new, it started with the Jews. When John refers to the Jews, it's those religious leaders uh, with whom Jesus interacted in his ministry. A rebel took to the streets. He recruited others to join him. They quit their jobs, left their families, and swore allegiance to him. They roamed the hood, challenged authority, and made a lot of people uneasy. Community leaders feared them. Religious leaders abhorred them. Law enforcement labeled them outlaws. We have to shut them down, they said. Get them off the streets. Protect our communities from these troublemakers. But they weren't part of a gang spreading hate and terror. They were spreading love. Please help us spread biblical truth. Subscribe, like, and share. God bless you. We're trying to unify the American people around the confounding love and forgiveness of Jesus. The campaign website is filled with phrases saying, Jesus called out the toxic religious and political systems, led the protest against the walls that divide us, and broke the chains that held women in bondage. Merchandise declares Jesus was a refugee and an immigrant. At first blush, it can all read like a stand against radical right-wing politics and related divisiveness. But the campaign pointedly says this is not an attack on anyone. It is an outreach to young Americans whom polls show are abandoning Christianity and other faiths at a historic pace. There are a lot of misconceptions about Christ uh, here in America. Um, People associating him with various political views and uh, various groups of people associating him with elitism and, and negative things in our country's past. And he gets us his rebranding that, uh, showing that Jesus is for all people of all races, ethnicities, uh, of all socioeconomic statuses. Uh, So that's one thing it's doing, but also it's kind of showing in our polarized society how, um, you know, people are either getting angry uh, with the other side or they're avoiding the other side altogether And we're showing through Jesus there's a third way, and that is to respect one another and to love other people with various views different from yourself. Jesus obviously told us, taught us to love our enemies. 
Um, and so we want to just show that confounding love of Jesus Christ to America and showed it his example and his teachings and his life really uh, hold uh, the answers to our modern day challenges that we're facing individually and as a society. For the most part, there is nothing wrong with what he said about the humanity of Jesus. But what is lacking in the He Gets Us message is the divinity of Jesus Christ. Even when you search their website, the focus appears to be on Jesus' humanity. Most non-believers do not have any issues with the humanity of Jesus Christ, but where they disagree with Christians is the claim that Jesus Christ is God himself. For anyone who doubts that Jesus Christ is God, read Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. It is undeniable that verse is a messianic prophecy about Jesus Christ. Titus 2, verses 13 and 14 explicitly refer to Jesus as God, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Through the centuries, these pseudo-scholars and skeptics have, as I said, accumulated and been intent on denying that Jesus is God. What did he say about himself? That's essential. There are some, there are many who say Jesus never claimed to be God. He assumes, of course, all through his ministry, the prerogatives of deity and divinity. He uh, declares that he has control over life, creation, death, he declares that he is the one who determines eternal destiny, and more of that unfolds in verses 25 to 29. He has the power, he says, to answer prayer. He has the authority to forgive sins. He has control over the angels. He has the power to open the kingdom. He has the right to receive praise and worship. He is to be obeyed in a way that is due only to God. Without correction, Jesus accepted the title of king, the title of Messiah, the title of savior of the world, the title, messianic title from Daniel, son of man and son of God. He took the sacred name of God, the Tetragrammaton, and applied it to himself numerous times in the Gospel of John. He declares himself to be the I am. All these lines of testimony, all these assumptions uh, that Jesus assumes, find here, not an implication, but an explication as he completely, clearly identifies himself as God. We all know that he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. Those are inescapable. He says he's equal to God in five ways, five ways, in nature, in works, in power, authority, and truth. Jesus doesn't act as God's representative. He acts as God. He is self-existence. God possesses life in himself. Look at verse 22. For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son. Do you, do you know who the ultimate authority is? The ultimate authority is the one who makes the ultimate judgment. The ultimate authority in a courtroom is the judge. The ultimate judge is the one who determines everlasting destinies. And that's the claim that Jesus makes. The, the Father then has established my equality. The Father has given me all judgment. He has given me all life, eternally so. Our wills are in perfect harmony. All judgment can be delegated to the Son in assurance that He will act in perfect accord with the Father's will. He will only act in accord with the Father's will then why does the Father delegate it? So that we will understand that we are dealing with God when we're dealing with Jesus Christ. He is claiming to be the supreme judge of the universe. Now, you're running two commercials during the Super Bowl. What can you tell us about them? Yeah, well, one will be a 30-second piece. Uh, the other is 60 seconds. And as you said earlier, you, you know how important and impactful these commercials are during the Super Bowl. It's a great chance to reach 
um, a huge swath of Americans, many of whom um, may never go to church, or at least up to this point would never go to church, uh, many of whom may have a false or negative view of Jesus or Christianity. And so it's a great opportunity, as I said earlier, to just show uh, the love that Christ has for all people. And uh, I think it'll be incredibly powerful during the Super Bowl. Do you have a specific hope for those who are seeing the ads? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, number one, that they get a true, more biblical sense of who Jesus was, uh, one that is more biblically and historically accurate. Uh, and, uh, of course, ultimately, you will want people to find saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, um, but also just to take the lessons, the, the brief, quick lessons that are shared in the commercials and apply that to your daily life and how you treat other people, even those who have differing views than yourself. Well, we can't pinpoint anything diabolical or heretical about He Gets Us, we share the same concern as Fight for Truth, which addresses many issues prevalent in many modern churches. And what have we learned about Jesus? Well, he was a super cool guy roaming the hood, challenging authority with his group of friends, making all the neighborhood Karens uncomfortable because they were so closed-minded that they misjudged him. The whole thing is intentionally framed to be culturally relevant, rather than a direct presentation of real biblical truth. It's meant to be provocative, clever, vague, but not clear and descriptive. And as a result, we have this weird amalgamation of clips and images that tell us basically nothing about the biblical Jesus. In what way was he a rebel? Why didn't the religious authorities like him? What did Jesus actually teach when he was walking the streets, or as they would like to say, roaming the hood? What do unbelievers watching this video need to actually know about Jesus? Well, the closest we get to a so-called answer is that Jesus was, quote, spreading love. Nothing about sin, nothing about repentance, nothing about hell, nothing about law. All we have is the vague idea that Jesus was a rebel of love who, quote, roamed the hood. The irony is that this video was supposed to be a public relations campaign that told you something about Jesus. In other words, it's supposed to tell you something accurate about a particular person in a clear, understandable way. Instead, we were given an unclear and frankly inaccurate portrayal of Jesus that offers far more questions than it did answers. More than ever, America needs Jesus. And if this country continues on this current path of rejecting Jesus, mocking him, and persecuting anyone who boldly proclaims the name of Jesus, the judgment of God, which had already begun, will come upon this nation in ways no one could fathom. When you study several books of the Old Testament, such as Judges, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, to name a few, you see how Israel suffered greatly when they abandoned God and embraced idolatry and all forms of perversions. Now, this country actually does need to find Jesus. The hate in this country is just so awful. I mean, it's a really, honestly, a most all-time high, the extreme left and the extreme right, and I'm not talking about one side or the other, because any time that I meet someone who's politically extreme or an extremist, that does derive from a place of hate. Jesus teaches us to love thy neighbor, to love one another. And so I do believe that this country needs to find Jesus, and I, and I think that this country is also very anti-American, so why would they not be anti-God?